it's time we start addressing performance on Project Low Fairmont, so let's do that in the form of a pair of GT40P heads. Welcome to Straight Six Fan. My name is Grant Tommy, helping you build your hot rod in your confidence. And today, well, over here on this shelf for the past 10 months have been a set of GT40P heads. It's time to finally do some performance mods to Project Boat Fairmont. You already saw what aesthetic gears can do for the bottom line on your 0 to 60 in a OPEC era car like mine, moving up from 247s to 327s. Well, if not, uh, I'll leave an info card up over here. You can check that out. But yeah, I never thought that um, <laughs> I'd be almost a year past getting this set of heads refreshed at a uh, local machine shop here in Kansas City. Um, so if you missed that episode, which I know I've picked up a ton of subscribers <laughs> in 10 months, well, I'll leave an info card over here as well to that. Um, so I'll say this. You know, I usually do a budget update when I install the part on the car, but I thought in this case it would make more sense to give you guys a breakdown of what lies before you from a dollars and cents standpoint right here, right now, so it doesn't get lost in, um, you know, all of the miscellaneous parts of like head gaskets, valve cover gaskets, new push rods, things like that. So what you're looking at in front of you is I went to Nolan's head repair. They had an old core laying around of GT40P heads, which they only charged me $100 for. From there, we got new valve, the valve seats recut. Um, they reused some existing valves where they could. New stock springs, um, new valve seals, things like that. Just a very slight decking, just to get a flat surface on the bottom. Um, otherwise, I got that all done for $325 worth of machine work, which I did work out a deal with Nolan's to shoot that episode to help promote them a little bit, um, to get this all done for $425 without getting the great deal I got on the core set as well as um, kind of the deal on machine work. I don't think it's worth spending any more than $425 on a set of heads like this um, if you have a better starting point like an 87. 5 liter, but a lot of you out there are, are telling me things like you need really need to do a camshaft with this, you uh, really should do a intake and 4 rail carb, yes I get all that, I do know all of that, but to stay on the budget plan that we're on, um, it's just, this is it, and I wanted to, sure, I wanted to be a little controversial with it, um, it's not typical, and I think that's going to make for better content. You know, we were just going to see straight up what just a set of heads and, well, full exhaust is going to do for this car. And so let's give you a budget update right now so you kind of get a handle on where I'm at. So if you caught the last episode, you know we were at $507.43. So you take away $425 from that, and I'm all the way down to $8.43 left in the budget. So you guys are probably getting the sense now that uh, the budget's going to get busted. Um, but I'm still trying to keep it as low as possible, as close to $4,000 as I can. And we'll get into that. You'll see how that how the chips fall on down the road. But today, um, the primary objective is to start gasket matching the exhaust side. Uh, so doing a light port job here on the exhaust side. So I'll bring you in closer to see what kind of stuff we can pull off. The gasket match. Now, I don't know that I'm going to go as aggressive as a true gasket match here, uh, that just seems like maybe a little bit too much material to take away, but there's definitely room for improvement, so we can mark out some extents with how far I want to go, or we'll call it a max allowed, um, and we'll probably stop short, but another thing is I'd love to be porting the intake side, however, um, I don't have a valve stem compressor, um, and so I don't really want to screw up a professional job and so I'm only going to do the exhaust side with the thought process of you know everything's positive pressure out so any shavings that may I may not miss and get not sucked out of here um, should be going out of the motor as opposed to into the combustion chamber. If I haven't already mentioned I am pulling a page out of the Riggs garage playbook 
um, all on his steps, so I'll leave an info card up over here to his video on the same exact stuff, so we're not going to get kind of detail into it, just let his video speak. Or one other thing I wanted to say about the reason why I'm doing a head swap as opposed to anything else. Um, bang for your buck, I think power-wise, I think heads are going to be, you know, when you come scale down from not nitrous, not a blower, not a turbocharger, I feel like camshaft and heads kind of are one and two the next, when you, the next one's down. And, you know, this whole project car is meant to be a learning experience, and I thought I would learn more by doing this than a simple... Uh, intake manifold and four barrel carb swap. So hence why I'm rolling this around. All right, so before I get carried away with the uh, carbide bits, um, I rewatched Eric's video. So I'm gonna be cleaning off the, uh, we'll call it the valve cover area, the, where all the valve, you know, the springs reside. I don't have a valve cover to help, uh, you know, cover up all of the metal dust I'm going to be creating with the carbide bit. Um, so I'm going to clean this surface off nice and good so I can tape over it, kind of mask over it, paper, paper over it. That's what I'm doing right here. Um, and then, you know, since I'm not going to probably get this both, both heads done today, I went ahead and put the other one up, sealed it back up. Um, again, all the airborne dust that I have to protect against figured, um, what am I thinking here? <laughs> So that's what we're doing right now. One last thing before we get started. Um, it's not gonna, it's gonna be a little more conservative than a true gasket match because as I studied the backside of the header flanges of the BBK headers, I noticed that that's kind of the surface they relied on to make their welds. So doing a true gasket match really probably wasn't gonna benefit me a whole lot as it was. And we'll go ahead and get the intake runners masked off as well while we're at it. As you can see, again, I left material around. Would rather be conservative than aggressive and go too far. But it does look like I certainly can go further up top um, than what I have. Uh, one of the things, again, go watch Eric Riggs, Riggs Garage video. He talks about there's a lip up here. Um, and so that's something that I spent more time grinding on. Um, but yeah, it looks like I could get a little more out of the top. I don't know if I will or not. Pretty happy with this. Don't feel like I went too far and um, you know this lower side has a nice kind of trumpet shape to it. Like just a good kind of rounded gradual curvature to it. So um, I think we're going to call it good here today. Uh, only gonna do one head because one I want to make sure I spend proper time cleaning it up because um, that's gonna be crucial. The other thing is, is I've not put the gas tank back under pressure with Fairmont so I'd like to get that done today because it's gonna work best if I you know back the car out and then back it into the garage so I can work out here with the hood popped when it comes time to um, to do the head swap so deconstruction probably starts next week next Sunday um, as well as you know, nice weather. I think I want to drive the car a little bit before uh, before it's immovable again. So anyway, that's what I'm going to be doing next. And so, uh, yep, one last shot at the heads. 
And then we'll start talking about some uh, other things to keep in mind moving forward. I got way into reinstalling the gas tank yesterday that I forgot to let you guys know what's coming up. As mentioned, obviously we're going to install all those heads, but with those heads, it's going to come a set of headers. We're going to be turning this stock H pipe into a Y pipe because, well, we only got one Flowmaster 50 series muffler. I want to keep single exhaust, so, um, you know, no hints that this thing's going to be any faster than it actually is. Like I mentioned in previous episodes, a sleeper sleeper. Obviously, if you want to catch all of this, you're going to want to be subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any of that coming up. If you want to know what actually went into the GT40P heads at the machine shop, go over here, watch this video, and you can see exactly what went into that process. That's going to do it for this episode. Until next time, peace out.